How's it going? Dave here from Evolve Lab, and today we're going to be covering what we call view persistency. Getting a consistent look across multiple views can sometimes be a challenge, so our goal today is to create four rendered views that all look cohesive. I'll break it down into manageable steps, first showing you how to set up your views for consistent results, then follow up with how to resolve any issues as we work through each view. You may be surprised at how quickly it all comes together in Varus. So let's get started. So I'm inside of Revit and I have these two views from the sample project, as well as two more that I've configured. But across all four, I've applied a view template. It's important that if we're looking for a consistent output image, that all of the input images are consistent. Let's go ahead and start Varus. And I've created a preset for this. You could pause the video and take a look at this prompt, but there's really nothing special going on. Just describing the image. All right, so this looks like it might be a good starting point. See what this last one comes back looking like. Yeah, I think I'll run with this one. All right, so now we want to just scroll down and lock in seed. And then we'll play with settings a little bit. So maybe I reduce the prompt strength and then increase it in another shot or reduce the material override and see how these affect the image. So I can see here that lowering that prompt strength cleared up that little grassy area we had on the wall. So I think this is the one I'm going to go with. Let me just clear out some of these old views. And then I'll switch back to Revit, change to the next view, and then refresh. I like to just hide to the original image just to make sure that it did. And then I will disable seed again. And why don't I just reapply that preset I had? And let's go ahead and send a few through. So immediately I can see that there's a lot of yellow uh, and that's probably coming from the yellow Volkswagen Beetle. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that line. And much better results. So I'll go ahead and clear out those yellow ones. And this looks like a pretty promising result. All right, so let's move on to the next view. If I minimize and go to my next view in Revit and then back into Varus. Make sure to refresh. And then again, I like to hide just so that I know that I'm looking at the right view. And let's go ahead and clear some of these out. And I don't see anything in the prompt that is really needs to change like we had with the yellow beetle. So let's go ahead and send a few through. All right, so this one looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and remove the others. And we'll lock in seed and then adjust our settings. So oh, maybe a little bit more material of red in this and play with prompt strength a little bit and see what we get out of those. But the material override didn't really get us much, but we can see that as the prompt increases, we're getting a little bit more of a dramatic effect on that concrete texture. So looking back at these, I think, this is probably the closest match. All right, so let me go back to Revit, switch to our fourth view, and then back to Varus. Make sure to refresh. And then I'll clear out these old views. And let's just double check that it is pointed at the right thing. And yeah, let's make sure we disable seed and we'll send through some more. All right, so we can see there's a lot more elements in this view, so I think I'm going to need to enhance the prompt. So let's add just a line about the black metal stove, and I'm just calling it wood furniture. And send through some options. Yeah, we can see immediately that it's getting the furniture and the stove a lot better. This looks like my best result. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with this one. So let's clear out these results. And then again, I'll lock seed. Let's try 
a little less prompt and the intensity is pretty strong so i'm gonna just bring everything down and see how it does yeah we can see that's way too flat and the difference between 45 and 55 is really not too noticeable but the prompt did bring things down a little bit i think this looks like a better fit all right so i'm going to clear out these other views and then we'll go back to the first image and go to the edit tab and we also want to make sure that we switch our view back in revit there i'll just make sure that it updates we're looking at the right thing we'll go back to the edit tab and what i'm looking to fix here is probably the roof and this wood wall everything else looks pretty good so we'll go in and mask it out it's nice to find edges because it'll just disguise the blend that much better so we'll go ahead and disable seed and then we're just going to talk about specifically what we want here i'm just going to remove all these lines about anything but the roof with the exception of the weather we do want to leave that alone so that the lighting ends up being similar make sure seed is off and i'll render a couple render a couple with v6 sharp and then a couple with v6 so i think this last one from v6 is the one that i actually like the most and we do have this render blend tool you just give it a little bit the whole thing kind of vanishes we'll go ahead and remove those and then if i go back to this first one I'm going to steal the brown timber walls line and then we'll go in and edit out this section. Kind of doing the same thing. We're just going to replace red corrugated metal roof with this brown timber clad walls. I think I do want to add a line about windmills. And let's go ahead and render a couple with V6 and a couple with V6 sharp. I think I like this first result from V6 sharp the best. We're ready to move on to the second view. One step we can't forget is switching our view in Revit. Make sure it's always pointed at the view that you're editing. Back in the edit tab, and the only thing that I really want to fix here is this uh, wall didn't really come out timber clad. So again, gonna use the masking tool. Mask out that segment, and then just remove the pieces of the prompt that don't make sense. Well, not that they don't make sense, but you don't really need them. And with a very specific prompt that's really only talking about one thing, you're going to get a result that you want. Again, let's render a couple with Sharp and then a couple with V6. And I really think that's the only thing in the image that I want to change. And all of these look pretty good. I'm going to have to really be picky to pick one. I think I like this one the best. Go ahead and remove these other results. All right, so let's switch over to that third view. And again, go back to Revit. Make sure we're looking at the right thing. I'm gonna mask out this area and give it the same treatment. Get rid of everything except brown timber clad wall and the weather. And make sure I disable seed, give it a couple on sharp and a couple on V6. Here we go. Think this last option is a better match. I'll go ahead and remove these other. And the last thing that I think I want to take a stab at is these windmills. They kind of ended up being structurally a little different. I'm trying to mask that out. And yeah, I'll just go ahead and render a couple with six and six sharp. See if we can get a better result. I think this first result's a little better. Gonna need a little bit more blend, I think. Yeah. Let's see, as soon as you just start to add a little blend, it starts to vanish into what was there before. I think we'll call that complete and get rid of these other views. 
and then we're ready to move on to the fourth. All right, so first step, go to Revit, make sure we're looking at the right view. Then we will go to the view we want to edit and start masking it up. So where we're going through that railing, I think V6 Sharp is going to be the tool we're going to want. Because otherwise, um, you can try them both, but I'm, I'm betting that uh, V6 Sharp will work better. Just does a better job with the, uh, the small details. Again, we're going to just target that timber clad wall. And let's do two with sharp. Actually, I'm going to do three with sharp. And then one with V6. Yeah, and you can actually see exactly what I'm talking about. V6 is a good tool for certain things. And hopefully, I've kind of highlighted that in this workflow. But you can see that that texture that was chosen. It's consistent through the railings, where in V6, it kind of gets lost, and it almost looks like a different material. If you're dealing with something that has a high geometry detail, V6 Sharp just does a much better job. And I think you know, this one might be the best option. All right, so I think that's our final set of images. The last thing that I want to show you is upscaling. I go back to this first image, I can click this button and then go up to a maximum of five. And there's just one thing to note with these, um, because of their increased resolution, they do take a bit longer. So just be a little patient. And then they also don't automatically download. When these come back, I'll just show you um, what I'm talking about. All right, so we have the final set of images. And you'll notice right in this top left corner, there's this uh, high resolution indication. It's not going to get automatically downloaded. That's really what it's trying to say. And then it's also saying, well, just kind of warning, warning you that you should do this as a final step. Because it's a much higher resolution, if I were to come in and do an edit, that edit is going to be done at a lower resolution, and there's going to be a pretty noticeable difference in quality. Make sure that you're doing the upscale as your final step. And then also just make sure you hit the little save button. And then just save it to your uh, downloads folder or wherever it makes sense. So that's it. We walked through how to set up your views. Recycle and adjust your prompt, leverage seed to do a little fine tuning, and then finally target some problem areas with render selection. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button. That way you'll get all the latest news from Evolve Lab. Thank you and have a wonderful day.